that offensive line did a number. Oh yeah, they did a number. All I, I mean, all, all due respect to Catawba D-line, all due respect to him, but I, I, I got a lot of faith in my, my defense too. I believe I believe they showed up today and actually showed what they really could do. So. We'll see how things shape up on those numbers. Yeah, you know, you're supporting your team with the defensive line. Seven sacks uh, officially. We thought there might have been two or three that weren't counted in that from the defensive line. When you're on the sideline and you're watching your defense do that sort of stuff and you go out there, does that motivate you even more, the fact that the protection was so good for Brandon and the blocking was so good for you? Is it even more? What do you get the, the bigger... Uh, you know, what comes the best to you, running the ball or seeing your defense pick you up like that? It's just a motivation kind of kind of thing. When you when you see the defense go out there and do do good as an offensive player, you you want you think you have to go out there and make a play. So it's like uh, they they work for us and we work for them. It's like a, a tandem. So it's a pretty good thing. All right, very good, SJ. Congratulations! A great great game this afternoon, not only by you but this entire ball club, both sides of the football. Huge win. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming up. We'll be glad to have you any week you want to come up. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> any week you want to come up. Any week you want to come up. With a big W on a huge road game. And ever since that happened, even last week at Carson Newman, even though we came up a little bit short, when we get on the bus now, we're not worried about, you know, we can't win on the road. The confidence is there now with our program. When we get on the bus, yeah, you know, we think we're going to win whether we're on the bus or we're at the house. How proud of you of this of this defense? Uh, officially seven sacks. I swear, I think it was eight or nine. But uh, how proud of you of those guys? Yeah, I think you're right. It probably was a couple more than that, and just outstanding effort from these kids. You know, secondary, great job in covering the guys up front, just bringing the pressure, and we we really sold it to the kids. And you guys helped a lot. You might not realize it, but uh, the questions that you've asked all week long of me and in the in the paper and that kind of thing, talking about Catawba having the best defense in the conference and ranked so high nationally and that kind of thing. Our kids on defense took that personally and uh, they came up here today to prove who the best defense is. I was, I was about to say a lot of blitzing from the linebacking and we saw Andre take advantage of that with a couple of sacks, but the front four, the push, whatever rotation you guys put in, I thought was better than the push that Catawba had on the opposite oh, yeah. side of the football. Yeah. You know, maybe the best front four push we've seen in a long time here from Newberry. And there's no question about it. We we sold our kids, and even early in the ball game when we had success bringing pressure, we, we sat them down and we said, look, we told you. We told you that pressure would work for us and keep coming. They cannot block you. And we just sold it to them over and over and over, and we played every defensive lineman we got. We rolled every one of them all day long, and everybody got to them. It, it didn't matter, like you said, whatever combination we had on the field. We got to them eventually, no matter what. We changed up schemes. We changed up personnel, trying to keep them guessing. We played, uh, I think, five or six inside linebackers. We played a little nickel packet today, and uh, you know, Kendall Glenn came in at a nickel force and did a great job. Uh, Brooks Burnett at the safety spot, rolling down into more of a, a robber or bandit scheme, playing the, actually an extra linebacker look for us and picking it back up out of the backfield. And those those different schemes, just keeping the quarterback guessing and making them hold the ball a little longer, and it paid off for us. Absolutely, and uh, not as many fumbles this week. Of course, the weather had a lot to do with that, and not as many penalties, so you got to be happy about that. Right, but, you know, a couple of things that's irritating me, and uh, it's special teams-wise. Uh, in the third quarter, we had a block in the back. We came out, stuffed them the first series that they had the football, forced them to punt, and, you know, we get it in decent field position, but then we get a, a clear block in the back, and our kid did the wrong thing. So then we're spotting the ball inside the five now, and the offense is struggling trying to get it out. We got a, Now we got a punt from the dang end zone, and another kid makes a mental mistake, lets somebody run by him, and we get a punt block. So there's seven points that special teams cost us. And then you go back to turnovers. We had our young kids in toward the end of the ball game trying to get them to run the clock out but give them some experience and some game time. And dang if they don't fumble it. And they're, so 14 points on the board in the second half that really – yeah, it's makeup for Catawba. Exactly. Dress I mean, up it's, it, it's, it, it's gimmies is the way I look at yeah, it. It really, really irritates me that, that we did that. The fumble because we harp on it so much, mm -hmm. and it's the center quarterback exchange on the gun, the same thing over and over. And this wasn't our starting guy. I feel like we've got him under control now. It was the backup guy that came in and done it. But the, the mental mistakes on special teams, punt return and punt team, and it's trying to give some young kids a chance and – 
they're going to learn from those mistakes, but but we can't continue to have. Them. We did have one question that was uh, sent in on the blog, and, and this is a good question, I think. Did you plan to run the ball as much today as you ended up running it? Was no. that part of the game no, plan? It wasn't. We came in here. <laughs> we came in here wanting to sling it all over the place, and we knew they was going to do it too. We was joking uh, with the officials before the game. We said this one might take five, five and a half hours to play because they're going to throw it every down, and we are too. Mm -hmm. And then we got out here. And it just cracked for us. And, but then I, I thought and SJ, you know, looked and sat down with Coach Barn before the game was, and said, look, you know, it doesn't matter. If he if he coughs it up once or twice, he's going to be our guy. We're going to stick with him. We're going to win with him, keep him in the ball game. We believe in him. And, hey, Akeem Sherman only carried the ball seven times, but he averaged seven yards a carry. Right. You know, so the running game today, even though it wasn't uh, plan A, uh, plan B really really paid off. Well, yeah. And I thought I think a lot of what ended up opening that up was uh, you know zone reads and options where right. Brandon Gant took the, maybe the first drive. I think he had three quarterback carries that were designed carries, right. and so that put it in the back of the Catawba defense's mind, and that opened up things a lot for exactly. Estee in the second exactly. quarter. And we talked about that, saying, "Look, we're going to throw it all over the place, and once we get them on their heels, now the running game will come into play for us." But it came into play a lot earlier than even we anticipated. All right, right back in the driver's seat now because you are one and one in the conference. You almost this was a must-win for both of these teams today. I think yeah, it really was. I mean, you can. You can survive one loss in the conference. Last year we survived two and got a, a share of the conference title. This year I don't know if you can survive two. You have to get real lucky if you if you have two losses and get a, get a piece of it. You've got to turn around and become a Catawba fan as they take on Carson Newman next week. Carson Newman did win, so they're two and zero in conference. And then of course Newberry with Mars Hill, and I'm sure you'll be getting to work on that soon. That's right. Well. You know, we already have. You always have to work ahead yeah. as a coaching staff. A lot of people don't realize that. And Thursday, we always say, hey, he's in the barn on Thursday. Right. You know, there, there's no changing. There's no swapping people out. It, we've got a game plan. Everybody knows what's going on. So Thursday, when we walk off the field on Thursday, we actually shift gears and start working toward the week ahead. If you don't, you'll run out of time. You'll never get it done. So, yeah, we've been looking at Mars Hill. And, uh, Hatton changed a lot, and it'll be interesting to see what they tried to do against Carson Newman, of course, but uh, got a pretty good idea of what Coach Clifton, what he likes to do. Yeah. They're, they're going to run, run the ball, a lot of power run game, and play action every once in a while, and defensively they're going to play a lot of just straight man coverage and come after you, and there's not going to be a lot of changes. All right, Coach, excellent job today, both sides of the football. A great job by the coaches as well. Congratulations. We'll see you back home next week. Thank you, guys. I'll see All you. Right. Coach Todd.